In this video, we'll walk through how to implement scheduled messaging with Sendbird Chat SDK for JavaScript within a Sendbird UI kit application. Scheduled messaging allows users to schedule a message to be sent in the future. The JavaScript SDK can be used in any environment or framework in your existing application. To show you how to implement this yourself, I'll be using UIKit as a ready-made chat environment for the starting point. In the documentation, you'll see we have the functionality to create, retrieve, update, and cancel a scheduled message, as well as list all scheduled messages in a channel and retrieve the total number of scheduled messages. Also, you're able to implement sending a scheduled message immediately if needed. It's important to note scheduled messaging is only available within group channels. When sending a scheduled message, it must be scheduled five minutes past the current time. By the end of this video, we'll have an application where a user can click to view a list of their scheduled messages for the channel, update a message, whether it's the message or the time, and a user can cancel each message. Lastly, a user can create a new scheduled message. You can find the complete source of this project linked in the description below. Let's get started. To begin, we'll be starting with a custom UI kit application already set up. Please refer to creating a custom UI kit app video or the UI kit documentation to get to this point. In customized app, the channel component will use the render message input property. This displays a custom message input component within the conversation window. Create a custom component called customized message input, which render message input will return. The customized message input will start off using the same layout from UIKit. Import the following items from Material UI and Material UI's icons material. Then import use Sendbird state context, Sendbird selectors, and use channel context from Sendbird UIKit. We'll import scheduled status from the chat SDK and DayJS. To start off, we'll use use Sendbird state context to access the state of the Sendbird provider. You can use the use Sendbird state context component with Sendbird selectors to implement a number of functionalities, like sending a user message. For our sample, we'll be using use Sendbird state context with the Sendbird selector methods get send user message and get send file message. The use channel context hook exports the data from the provider to the UI components in order to create a functional view of the group channel. This allows every UI component on any level to get access to the data as long as it's inside of the provider. Use channel context will allow us to check if there's a current group channel or disabled variable. If so, we'll set those variables. Then have an input text variable that will store the state of the text that's being written in the input field of our conversation window. And lastly, get the current date and have the date time selected variable hold the state for today's date. The following code is how the message input bar is composed in UIKit. We're going to have the customized message input return the same layout. On line 74, outlined input will store the input text of the text being typed. If the user presses the enter key, it will call a function check send user message. On line 87, there will be a check. If the input field's empty, there's going to be an icon to attach a file. When a file is selected, it will call send file message as seen on line 94. If the input field is not empty and has text in it, the input field will display an icon to send a message. On click of this icon, it will call check send user message. In check send user message, set the message's params. We'll set the message to equal the input text from the input field. Then using the variable send user message, pass in the channel and params. Once that's done, reset the input text. Handle change is called each time the user types in the input fields. It will set the input text to equal the most recent text. The send file message function will check the file selected and its size. Set the params file to equal the file chosen. Then pass in the channel and params required and call send file message. These three functions are the basis of what message input does. Now we want to incorporate the scheduled messaging. To start off, when the input box is empty, next to the icon to attach a file, add an icon button from Material UI. When this icon is clicked, we want to render a list of the user's scheduled messages for this channel. 
On click, we'll call a function load scheduled messages. Create a function load scheduled messages. Set the show schedule message list to true. This variable will keep track if the schedule message list is open or closed. Set the params with the channel URL and scheduled status. The scheduled status is set using scheduled status imported from the chat SDK. Since we only want to show a list with pending scheduled messages, we'll set the params scheduled status to be one with status of pending. Then use the chat SDK with the SB variable to call dot create schedule message list query and pass in the params. Once that message list is returned, use set schedule message list to store it in a variable called scheduled message list. Next, we want to keep track of the number of scheduled messages. To do so, set the params. So we'll set scheduled status with scheduled status from the SDK dot pending. Then call get total scheduled message count from the SDK and pass in the params. Once that number is retrieved, use set scheduled message count with the return of the total scheduled messages count. In the load scheduled messages function, set show scheduled message list was set to true. Now include a check in the return to see if show scheduled message list is true. If it is, then return a custom component called scheduled message list. This will display the list of scheduled messages for this channel. Import and create scheduled message list. Going back to customize message input, we'll need to pass in variables from this file to schedule message list. Pass in the schedule messages count so that the number of schedule messages can be displayed in the message list. Then pass in schedule messages list to display each message within this list and pass in set show schedule message list, which will be used to close the list. Schedule message list will have a tab to display an X in the top right hand corner. Now when clicked, we'll set set show schedule message list to false and close the list. The message list will display the total count of the scheduled messages there are in this channel and list each scheduled message. Now add in an update button for each message. When a user clicks update, it will call function update schedule message. Define update schedule message in customized message input. Update schedule message will set set show schedule message list to false and set show schedule message form to true in order to remove the schedule message list from the screen and display the message form. Then in the return, check if show schedule message form is true. If it is, then return a custom component called schedule message form. Now import and create schedule message form. Pass in handle change, input text, set date time selected, schedule message, and set show schedule message form. Now in schedule message form, import react use effect and calendar date picker, which will be a file that displays a calendar for us to select the date and time to schedule a message. The schedule message form will return a form. It contains a div to close the form. On click of it, it will set set show schedule message form to false. The form will contain an input field for a message and render a calendar date picker. Create a calendar date picker file. Import the following from React, DayJS, and Material UI. Return the localization provider, stack, and date time picker components for Material UI. These are used for a basic calendar layout where a user can select a date from the calendar view. Once the user selects a date, then a clock will appear to select the time. In Date Time Picker, define the value property and initially set it to be today's date. Date Time Picker accepts a minimum date, so set that to be today's date. On Change will set the value equal to the new value when a date or time is selected. Use effect will send the most updated date and time selected back to the schedule message form. Jumping back into schedule message form, use use effect to find the input fields element, get its value, and save it to the input text variable. When the form is submitted, it will call schedule message. Define schedule message and customize message input. When creating schedule message, since the form is being used for both updating and creating a schedule message, Check to see if the message is being updated from an existing message or created for the first time. 
On line 98, an update scheduled message, set message to update is set with a message object. The message to update variable will allow us to keep track of whether the scheduled message form is being used to update a message or create a new one. So if message to update exists, then it's an existing scheduled message that needs to be updated. And it was clicked from the update button in the scheduled message list. In this case, to update a scheduled message, start with setting the date time selected variable to a Unix timestamp. Then check if there's a Unix timestamp. This means that the user is updating the date or time, add that to the params to update. Otherwise, the params will just be the message to update. Use the update scheduled user message function from the chat SDK and pass in the scheduled messages ID, as well as the params we want to update. The other scenario will be if the form is used to create a new scheduled message. Then set the params with the message equal to input text and schedule that with a timestamp that's passed in from the form. Use create scheduled user message from the chat SDK and pass in the params. After updating or creating a scheduled message, reset set message to update to null, set input text to an empty string, and set show scheduled message form to be false. In customized message input, when a user types in the input bar, add an icon button from Material UI that will appear and on click render schedule message form. This button will allow users to schedule the message after writing the message in the input field. When the icon is clicked, set show schedule message form will equal true and the schedule message form previously mentioned will appear. Pass in update scheduled message and a new function will create called cancel scheduled message. In scheduled message list, add a cancel button. When a user clicks on the cancel button, it will call cancel scheduled message function. Go back into customized message input and define cancel scheduled message. This function will receive the scheduled message and use the cancel scheduled message function from the chat SDK. This requires the scheduled messages ID to be passed in. Once that message is canceled, call load scheduled messages to reload the list of pending scheduled messages. This will update the UI to no longer display the message that was just canceled and render the current list of scheduled messages. And that finishes up our sample. The final product incorporated creating, listing, displaying the total count, updating and canceling scheduled messages within a UI kit application. If you want to learn more about scheduled messaging, please visit the Sendbird website for the documentation and check out the GitHub repo linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.